Hello everybody, welcome to this restorative, chill, relax class. If you don't have a bolster or blankets, don't turn off the video. You can use uh, long pillows or just comforters or throw blankets and really towels, pretty much anything that's soft and foldable that you can make into different shapes. You don't have to have bolsters and these Mexican blankets. And even blocks can be replaced by soup cans and books and various other things. So don't worry, you don't have to have all the specialized accoutrements, but you do have to have the desire to lay down for long periods of time. So this is a really good practice for me, for my body, it serves three functions. One, it helps relieve any sciatic pain that occasionally pops up. It also helps me during the menstrual cycle where low back pain becomes a little bit of an issue. It's more like low back pressure for me, but that uh, is a relatively new thing for my cycle. So that's uh, proof that your body things are never the same. And third, it helps me get to sleep, it helps me restore and re-energize myself during long periods of just wearing myself a bit thin. And it's great for the holidays when everybody's a little, you know, crazy and overextending themselves. And usually in the month of December, you know, attendance in yoga classes starts to dwindle a bit. And of course, it pops right back up again in January. But <clears throat> when we need the yoga most, we tend to resist it. Just like when we need to take some medicine or eat a little healthier or go for a walk, maybe even see the doctor, we tend to resist that for whatever reason. Oh, it's going to take time out of my day. Think of all the time you spend on Facebook. Gather it all together and see if it fits into a two-hour slot and make a commitment to use that for something for you next week, whether it's a yoga class or a spin class or taking uh, two one-hour walks. There's always time if it's a priority. That's something that I found in my life that I'll make excuses for not having time. So I make sure that if I really do have the time and I don't want to do something, I just tell myself or other people I don't want to do it. I don't try to make up excuses. And I think it's important to be honest with yourself. Just say, you know what, I didn't feel like going to yoga today, but man, I think I would have felt better if I did. Or, I don't want to go to that dinner. Say no. Just say, I, I really, you know, I don't want to go. You could even just say, no, thank you, and not get into whether there's a want or not a want. So anytime you need to say no, that's great. Anytime you say yes to more and more things, that have to do with other people, you're also saying no to things that you might need for yourself. So there's a balance, just like anything else. All right, let's get started. So in this case, you're saying yes to restorative. Yay. I'm starting with a bolster. So something rolled up and soft and pillowy. My bolster's kind of thin. I did that on purpose because you can always make a bolster bigger with blankets and other bolsters, but you cannot make them thinner. At least I haven't figured it out yet. And then on top of the bolster, I have a blanket because I want this to be taller. Taller is going to require less of a twist, and shorter will require more of a twist. You'll see in a second. Now, another thing you might want is another blanket, because maybe you want to be covered up. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be covered. Other things you can do with blankets are use them in between legs for any spinal twisting or just laying on your back. Let me show you what I'm doing. So I've got the bolster, not right up against my left hip, but it's it's close. And I've got my legs loosely arranged, two little thunderbolts. So calling upon the restful restorative powers of Thor, I'm gonna watch how this top hip moves with you. You could also have the top hip not move with you. 
that's more of a twist, and that twist can even sometimes get down into the lumbar spine. So you need to know whether that's appropriate for you. Um, I don't recommend twisting in the lumbar spine unless you're particularly aware of your body and you know it's okay for you. So let's let the hip go with us today. Square your chest to the front of your bolster. And again, if you can't square your chest, it's okay. The left side is going to be heavier no matter what. So you could be here because range of motion could be very iffy. Well, that's where your book, can of soup, or block come in handy, right? Maybe you can't do it. Doesn't matter. Come on down. You're the next contestant. And turn your head in the direction of your knees first. This is considered a little bit easier. It's less spirals in your spine. And then relax the arms. Let your whole body chill out. Another thing you can do here is over time, perhaps the gaze goes in the other direction. This is going to produce a little more stress for some people and a little more stretch for others. So another difference between stress and stretch in your body. And just pick what works for you. If you have a choice, you can pause the video and stay in for three to five minutes. Or you can hang out with me for about a minute to 90 seconds on each side. You may find when you turn the head, there's more stretching and pulling in the upper back. You may need to go back and forth. Or even have your head just neutral. Maybe with a block or something extra fluffy under your third eye. Because you want to breathe. Let the shoulder blades melt away from your spine and slightly down the back, not a lot. We're not going for a rigid placement of the shoulder blades, but rather a mindful release of any tension you don't need there. And let the breath fill all the way down, not just to the belly, but feel the side ribs open up. And feel the back waistline and create a little space down below your navel. Also, if your legs don't like being arranged like this, you can take them closer together. For foie grand finale, you can extend one of the legs. Now the top leg extension is going to be a little more intense for a good deal of people, but it's available to you. Just remember that when you do this, the low back has a tendency to sort of crunch into itself. So trying to allow the body to still rest on the bolster while you extend your leg. The bottom leg, to me, I don't get as much out of it, I don't feel, but then again, just because you don't feel something happening in the body doesn't mean it's not happening. And when you're ready, you take your hands close to you, so your body itself actually comes off of your bolster first, because the head is just hangly dangly, and... You can maybe look around. Really slow. Like you're trapped in a jar of honey. I don't know if trapped would be the right word for that. Taking it to the other side as gently and smoothly as possible. Taking a sip of your extra delicious tea. That's my turmeric ginger clove lemon honey tea. It's good for what I you. Right hip 
little space between you and your equipment. The thunderbolt may or may not have worked out for you. Try something different if so. Let your top hip come on over. Walk your hands and notice that your body will be a little more resistant on your second side. So if you do this multiple times, you may want to start on your right side, not always the left, and vice versa. So take that body down. The legs are going to move a little bit because they're going to follow your torso. Like someone standing on either side of you, pressing their whole palm into the shoulder blade with their fingertips just around the tops of your shoulder and then gently melting those shoulder blades into the body and away from your spine. Letting the breath be full. Mindful expansion in the abdominal cavity. And that includes your back. So don't forget that area. Includes your spine and includes down to the base of your torso where your little tail is. After some mindful breaths down there, allow the echoes of that filling breath start to wane into more automatic set of breathing. If you choose to turn the head, do so mindfully. You can choose to extend your top leg or draw it closer to your bottom leg. Keep the top waist, the left waistline, puffing up with the breath and a slight pushing down of the muscles to open up space. So it's not just the lungs, but there's also a little tiny bit of effort on your part. Just a tiny bit. You can try the bottom leg. And feel free to pause the video to stay longer. I recommend five to seven minutes on each side. And I've been known to fall asleep in this pose. And then you feel compelled to go to the other side and fall asleep again so you're not lopsided. It's a great way to trick yourself into a nap. All right, hands close. Body moves, head follows. So that's the first part. Let's do part two. Maybe bolster goes away. Maybe not. I'll show you how you can use it. So you lay on a flat surface, or you can lay on something that's fluffy, if you like. Come to your back. You have the choice of a blanket between the knees or nothing at all. And allow your feet to be, to start very close to your seat. Spinal twist over to the left so your bolster can support you 
anything can support you as long as you feel grounded. And then your choice, the arms can extend to either side in a T. Palms facing up will gently draw the collarbones apart. Twist B is a bit more intense. It's a crossing of the right leg. Hips come over to the right an inch or six. No, really, I don't know, maybe about four inches. And then you twist over to the left. More intense. It's not necessary. I take that blanket, I just put it on top here, kind of to remind my body to settle. A sandbag would be a great tool here if I had one. And don't be afraid to use the left arm in a very gentle way, the back of the left shoulder, the top of the left arm, to press a little bit more into the ground and then shoulder away from ear. So what that will do is gently twist your chest more towards the sky and naturally put more weight into the back of your right shoulder and arm. It also may cause tension in the head and neck, so you need to be aware that this is a minuscule movement, just a tiny bit of effort in the upper arm and doesn't drag the neck with it. Your choice, look away from your knees very similar to what we did on our bellies just now. And if your chin tends to draw down towards the right shoulder, remember to draw it in and maybe back a little bit so the chin points mostly towards your forearm and not down into the shoulder. But then again, your comfort is more important than my instruction. Give yourself another minute or two. Try to inhale into that left side of the body that's a bit cramped right now. And then as you exhale, try to draw the navel up into the body, towards the ribs. See if that gives you a little extra twist. Inhale, feel left side body, back of body. Exhale, draw the navel up towards the ribs now and more towards the right rib cage. Relax your shoulders, relax the neck muscles. And do that one more time. Inhaling down to the base of the spine so you feel the hip creases with your belly. And then draw that pelvic region up and slightly towards your right rib cage. Relax here, neutralize the head. And the silence time to come up. I would use a deep breath to prepare and a little exhale. So you can lift, squeeze the inner thighs and draw a little Mulabandha action to move the legs. Take your hips to center if you move them without much ado or effort. Take your bosta to the right. So if you're going legs together with or without blanket, just take, you can move the hips over to the left a little bit. It's not necessarily a bad thing and take the twist right over. If you're going cross-legged, left over right, hips to the left, knees to the right. Another variation for the arms is the cactus. Now here you'll want to feel a little opening in the left side body because you just twisted there. So maybe for three breaths or so, inhale into the left lung a little more mindfully. 
all the way down into the left outer hip and even into your left sit bone. Let the exhales come out slowly from bottom to top. Perhaps use an exhale to press a little deeper into the back right arm to nudge the chest more towards the sky. Left shoulder blade finds some gravity. You can breathe however you want though. Gaze to the left if and when you're ready. Let the legs become relaxed. They were crossed, and when we cross our legs, we tend to tense up in the inner thighs, but let's just keep them where they are loosely, and if they decide to unravel, then let your legs and pelvis be the boss here. Feel the full weight of your head into the floor. back of your right hip and the whole back of the rib cage. Now inhale into the right side body and exhale. Draw the low belly up, navel towards the ribs and twist a little bit to the left. Repeat that if you choose or discard it. It takes away from relaxing and comfort. And that's what you're here for. Then you don't need it. Decide when it's time to come out. Inhale. And exhale. A little drawing in of those inner thighs. Come to center. If you have a blanket handy, slightly folded, maybe draw the knees into the chest. The blanket would have to come into the hip creases. When you press the center, this may not work if you've got some extra flesh, or it may not work. It's definitely not going to work if you're pregnant, so please don't do that. But this can help take in a little extra pressure and a sort of a minor massage into the internal organs. And I find that it really does help in some ways to draw some attention. You know, there's a lot going on down there when you're on your cycle to draw the attention to the sides here of the body where the legs are. And also you're getting into some lymph nodes too in the hip crease area, inner thigh area. So maybe you take the blanket and you give it a little squeeze with the legs crossed, just a little bit. And sometimes if you do this, you give yourself like a minor adjustment in your back. That happens to me sometimes. It's always had positive results for me, I'm not saying it's going to be a great thing for everyone. Roll to one side. Remember your head stays low and down. Like a little fruit hanging off the vine. So to end this, you may just lay flat on the floor and show loss in the eyes. You could take a bolster blanket for a little bit of a heart opener. I'll show you that. So just take it behind the lumbar spine, not touching, give yourself like three to five inches, maybe legs apart, maybe legs together, bound angle might be your thing, legs out. For me, what I would take today is I would go, because this is just how I'm feeling, I would go face down, Shavasana, face down, but only after some more tea. A 
what I have here is my low back protector. So if for whatever reason you have a, a flat, like a really flat low spine, or for one reason or another, your lumbar spine has been pushed out, that curve has been pushed out a little bit, this may not be the best thing for you. You may actually need either nothing or something very thin, maybe just to protect the front hip points if they're bony. For me, I've got a little bit of lordosis, so what do I do? Another thing, this is probably good for the vast majority of people. I take something, it could be a blanket, and it goes <clears throat> like the top of my thigh. I feel my hip bones in it, and it's for me, it's over my, it's right to my navel. My navel's a little high, but I do this to protect the low spine from compressing. Also, with the bolster and some blankets, you're going to feel a little pressure in the, the guts, kind of. So you may have to adjust it so there's a gradual decline of the blanket going, you know, towards your torso and higher up the torso. For me, this is good today, and I'm happy with it. And I would take my head to either side, or perhaps a a prop in the third eye center. Now, I definitely would need a smaller block for this. This is too high. But I have in the past used a blanket as well, with my nose off of it so I can breathe. Let the toes turn in and the heels flop out. Arms can be by your side. You don't have to be, you know, at the beach. Be down by your side, palms down or up. Your choice. Palms up will sort of roll the shoulders forward a little bit. That feels good to me right now. So that's what I'm going to do. If you want to wiggle the hips, you can. And however you choose to spend your Shavasana, I highly recommend you do it for as long as you want. If you have the time, get through those first few moments or minutes where you're like, okay, I could get up now and start to do my dishes, my laundry, go to the store. Get past those. Get to the point where you're pretty comfortable and you don't even realize that you're laying down. You're just sort of chilling. And then stay there until the body, the body, not the mind, the body actually indicates that it's done, it's ready, it's rested. And that could be by falling asleep and waking up. If you have any questions about these poses and this practice and, you know, maybe your body doesn't respond as well with the symptoms I mentioned earlier as mine does. And that's part of the practice, is knowing everything there is to know about you in every aspect possible. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, have a lovely Shavasana and have a wonderful day.